One of the things I've learned working here is that when people go to order things, they don't know the technical terminology for what they're ordering, and sometimes they're getting the wrong part. One of those things is going to be power cords. So let's go ahead and go through that. I know I've talked about it before, but uh, this is very important. And me being here at a warehouse, I have a luxury of having a variety of different cords available. So I can show you perfect examples. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, these look like typical cords, but there's a lot more to them than what you think. What people normally see is cords like this, which are typical 120 volt end and an IEC end at the other side. But power cords have a variety of different ratings and the factors affecting those ratings are gonna be your length, your diameter of the conductors inside and the quality of the insulation on the exterior. And that is gonna be governed by the plug that they install at the end of the cable. The reason that some cables have a different plug end is because they'll have a different rating. Like this one here, it's got a green dot, so you can tell that this is a hospital rated power cord. Whereas the example I showed you, this is not a hospital rated power cord. It's a traditional cord that you might find on a printer or a computer. This should never be in a patient care area. That's why we have this type of cord. The different plugs you're going to see are going to be your 15 amp, your 20 amp, and then we might even see some of the 220 volt. The 15 amp, it's going to be a traditional plug end. It's called a NEMA 5-15P. And the other end is an IEC 320C13. Now the C13 is the style of the end, just like the 5-15P, 15, 15 amps. The other style that you might see is a 5-20P, and that is gonna have one of the blades in a horizontal position. So when I said that your voltage and your amps are gonna be governed by the plug end, you can see a traditional outlet that you normally see is the 15 amp, but there's also a 20 amp, which is the outlets that we find in medical facilities. It's got the little horizontal piece along with the straight piece, and there is a plug that will coincide with that. It's called the 5-20P. You'll find these usually on heater coolers, maybe refrigerators and freezers, things that are gonna pull a lot more current than what your traditional piece of medical equipment will. But these are gonna be the most common ones that you see. And notice on some of the units here, I've got different configurations. So these are all gonna be called something different, like a left angle, a right angle, a down 90 degree angle. And this one here is a special one. I actually found this on our warehouse shelf because we sell them. And this is called an IEC locking. See how it's got these little tabs? There are certain medical devices where they never should have the power cord pulled out. And in those cases, maybe you want to install a cord like this. An example might be a patient monitor in a patient room. If you've got staff like cleaning crew or if you've got patient and family that keep unplugging it. This style here is much less likely to come unplugged because in order to pull it out of the IEC connector, which is like this one right here, in order to pull it out, you have to squeeze both of these red tabs on the sides and that's gonna release the cable. Now you can pull it out. Those ones can be found in operating rooms and places like that where you definitely don't want it coming unplugged in the middle of a surgery. And if you don't have them installed, then maybe you wanna get some. This style right here, if you have a device that's gonna be tight up against the wall, I always, if I find one of these cords just floating around, I'll save it in a drawer. They're very special. And whenever you have something in close proximity, it prevents that damaging bend that's currently at the, at the corner. That's very, very dangerous when one of these normal cords, see, I don't have an example. If one of these normal cords bends at a dramatic angle right here, it's gonna eventually cause damage. So that's why we have 90 degree cords and we have 90 degree downspout cords there's a variety of different ones so depend on your situation that's going to be the different cord that you're going to order now there are always exceptions to the rule and one of the exceptions is going to be this IEC 320 C19 you can ignore this side over here because the square plug right here is found on some medical devices that are going to pull probably more amps but Manufacturers kind of do this to make the cord proprietary. If you know what you're looking for, like this IEC 320 C19, 
it makes it much easier to find the cord. And that's why I'm making this video, is because if you need a cord for something like a Belmont FMS 2000 rapid infuser, it has one end that is the C19 connector, and the other end is either gonna be a 5-15P or a 5-20. So instead of spending $150 from a cord from the OEM, all you have to know is your correct terminology that you're looking for a 5-15P to IEC 320C19. And you'll find that cord on Amazon. You just have to know the correct terminology for what you're looking for. Now guys, I will leave this photo in the description down below so that you guys can get a link to it. These are excellent charts that show you what you can find, including some of your twist lock which you'll find on medical lasers and some surgical beds and stuff. There are a variety of different ones that are in the field. Now what you should know, as I've already explained, the plug end is a NEMA plug and the other side is an IEC. Now it's two organizations and they work together. The IEC is more for the equipment side and the NEMA is technically a North American standard. The NEMA is the National Electrical Manufacturers Association, and IEC is the International Electronics Committee. So they're two different groups, they work together, and that's how we get the standards for what our cords are. You see this cord right here? I have a NEMA 5-15P at one side. The other side is an IEC 320C13. And that is how you would order the power cord. Not to mention, you'd also need a hospital grade and probably 16 to 18 foot long. So you gotta know all these stats when you order a power cord or else you're probably gonna get the wrong cord. Anyway guys, I just wanted to do a quick video on power cords, show you guys that there are standards that regulate this. We just can't willy nilly and create a power cord for anything. There are electrical standards that we have to follow. You should know that you can look up the terminology for each of these type of connectors and you can find that exact specific power cord. Some manufacturers are tricky. They're trying to make proprietary style cords. Often that's not the case. Just learn the terminology for the connector on the end, learn the length of the cord, and obviously you want it to be a hospital grade cord, and you can probably order almost any cord that's on the market. Thanks for watching, guys.